everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be painting holly leaves and berries. They're the perfect motif if you want to put them on Christmas cards or gift tags. So let's get our supplies out and let's get painting. Now before we get started, as usual, I'm going to run through what supplies I'm using. So in my palette I have my Winsor & Newton Professional watercolour paints, um, so I'll tell you what colours I'm using throughout, but if you want my complete supply guide listed is on my website. Um, then for paper we are using Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, 100% um, cotton paper, um, and for brushes I'm going to be using my Princeton Aqua Elite size 6 round. Um, so yeah, you'd want to um, watercolour brush with a fine tip for this one to get the points. If your brush isn't very fine you can always use a smaller size just to get some of the points of the holly leaves. So, holly leaves have um, a pretty simple shape so what we're going to do is sketch them out first and then we'll fill them in with some watercolour. So we're going to be working um, and from the kind of top third of our paper and what I want you to do is sketch this quite lightly in pencil um, and we're going to pull the centre of the first hollow leaf down here and then another one down here. And then what I want us to do is create the end tip here and here. And then what we're essentially going to do is create um, curve strokes. So we're going to start from the top here and curve out to a point. And then we're going to come in and curve and come out to a point and do the same, eventually meeting our end point there. And we're going to do the same on the other side and come back and meet. Okay, this is just an initial sketch just to get the shape of it, all right? Um, so don't worry if it's not perfect. I've gone over my end point there, but I quite like how that looks. There we go. Now what you can do is go in and correct some of the lines. I think this is a little thin, so I'm going to correct that line up there and this one up there. Now I'm going to erase some of these that I don't want to get us the final pencil outline. I'm going to get rid of that dot there as well. Okay, so that's the shape we're going for and then we're going to do some berries up here. Um, so just with the edge of the eraser I'm going to scrub out these lines. Um, the reason you want to do this is that pencil lines are visible under watercolour because it is translucent. Um, so if you have dark pencil lines they're going to show through and then if your paint doesn't exactly get to the edges um, it might look a little clumsy. Some people like the effect and it's not necessarily a bad thing um, but I just want these to look as neat as possible. Just brush that off. I always have bits of rubber shavings all over my desk. Right then, so you might not be able to see these that well on camera um, but they are still quite visible so at least we know what we're working with. So shape all sorted, um, let's get mixing up our greens. So for this I'm going to be using um, Hooker's Green, so it's a nice deep um, bluey green and I'm going to add uh, a little Prussian blue to it to make it deeper and bluer. So a little Prussian blue there and we're after this nice foresty green colour. Okay then we're going to mix up a slightly lighter value on the side with loads of water and we want this to be quite wet because we're going to do some wet and wet playing around and then essentially using my size 6 brush I'm going to be filling in the shape so I'm going to do the outline and it doesn't matter if this isn't perfect on the pencil lines and then I'm going to do from the halfway line as well so I'm going to try and leave a slight gap in the middle here for a highlight and then using my wet mixture. I'm just going to fill that in for now. You can use the tip of your brush or a smaller brush to get really good points on those edges. And then we'll fill it in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You can always turn your paper as well as you're going out to those points and doing those curves if that's easier. Um, but it helps to try and keep it in the same place and you can master a bit of control over it then. And then I'm going to run another line up there but leaving that white space, as I said, in the centre. 
So it just helps divide the leaf in two and it stops creating one big area as well of colour, um, which can blend in together and start to look a little blobby. I can see where I've missed that line there. Okay, you can see I'm adding a little bit of darker colour here. What we're going to do is have a little play around with this effect. So we're going to go back to our dark mixture and then begin adding it across the edges and to the points. And this is where watercolour is, you know, for me, the best paint medium you can play with. Um, it just allows you to do so much just by adding a little bit more and letting it play around and, and spread as it wants to. One of the things that beginner watercolourists, I think, struggle with the most is getting good contrast on this. So try not to make the whole leaf dark. We just want certain parts of it to be dark and we want to keep that lightness in other parts. I'm going to add a bit more blue to that and then do along this edge again. You can always reshape some of the edges while it's still wet. I like to have the darkest bits at the base where it would naturally be a shadow at the tips and then potentially along that central highlight as well. It helps create the kind of idea of a surface that's not flat. Okay, I like how that first one looks. So we're going to do the next one in the exact same um, tactic. Just outline it first. I love painting Christmas things. They really get me in the Christmas spirit, especially when the weather starts to change. I'm not really a winter person as such, but I do really like Christmas. These are a great one you can use on Christmas cards or gift tags. Um, for anything that you're wanting to make for family and friends. And it's so much easier, Holly, than it looks like it's going to be when you're looking at it and you think, oh, it's not two dimensional as a leaf. You know, it's got this weird, complicated shape. But actually, once you get the hang of the little um, curves and coming back out to a point, the rest of it will just, the shape will just appear as you're going. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to play around with sketching it first and see how it looks. OK, I'm going to try overall to keep this one slightly lighter than the first one. So although we're going to do the contrast, we're maybe not going to do as much. Might have it a little bit more green, a little less blue. One of my top tips for wet and wet watercolour is to let it blend around on its own. The more you try and smush it around with your brush, the more you're going to overwork it and it will, it'll all kind of turn into the same colour. Um, if you leave the paint to do its own thing, it creates this really beautiful spread and contrast. The more you fiddle around with it, the more likely you are to mess that up. Okay, I really like how they look. So what I'm going to do is add some red berries at the top. Now you want to get all the green off your brush with this. Um, because green and red are complementary colours, it means that if you mix them together, they're going to make a really muddy brown colour. Um, and it's just not going to look very striking. So I'm going to use um, Scarlet Lake for this. Now I want a really bold, um, classic red. You can see how vibrant it is. I might add a little Windsor Red Deep to that just to darken it a touch. It's two of my favourite reds when mixed together. They make a really good bloody neutral red. Right then. For the berries, what you want is a circle. Nice and bold. And then leave a small area of white space like a highlight. Perfect. Wash your brush off. Come back. Make sure you tap it on the edge of your cup to get off the excess. And then do the same thing but in a much lighter value. And then you want another one, maybe a bit smaller up there. Now it's really easy to go overboard with these berries, but try and get them not symmetrical and in groups of three, ideally. 
they create this little triangle composition. Now you can make this into a pattern, you can do them small and spread them out all over the page. Um, you could do more leaves, you could make this into a wreath if you wanted. Um, but I'm going to stop there as a little motif. I might scan it and put it into some gift cards or some Christmas cards. But that is how I paint holly leaves. And there they are all finished. I love how they've turned out. The contrast with the red and the green and the really simple shapes. They're just such an easy Christmas painting to do. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and tell me in the comments what you want to see in the next video. And I'll see you there.